And aloha, innovation warriors. It's Megan Alonso, and you're listening to episode 80 of MedTech Inspired, where I talk with medical startups and industry experts that inspire every Tuesday. If you're listening to this the day it goes live, it's Halloween, and you know what can be really scary besides the bad Trump and Hillary costumes this year? Getting on stage when you're pitching, getting nervous, sweaty, and thinking about how the judges or investors are probably thinking how bad you're messing up. So get prepared with our pitch checklist over at amua-services.com forward slash pitch checklist. Amua is spelled I-M-U-A and it's a Hawaiian word meaning to advance forward with passion despite rough waves. Again, that address is amua-services.com forward slash pitch checklist. Now let's catch the wave of medtech innovation with today's featured guest, Greg Summer. Greg, are you ready to hang 10? Aloha, Megan. Let's do it. All right. Greg is a mechanical engineer turned entrepreneur after he got his feet wet at Sandia National Lab and point of care diagnostics for biodefense technology. He was inspired to change the face of healthcare by empowering the consumer to monitor their own health at home in his startup, Sandstone Diagnostics. So Greg, happy Halloween and give us a little bit more depth on that intro and some personal details. Thanks. Happy Halloween to you too, and appreciate you you bringing me on. This will be fun. Yeah. So the you know the broad strokes background. My career has been in clinical diagnostics and specifically point of care technologies, and focusing on microfluidic implementations that can that can help improve the performance, speed, and time that it takes for us to do to do clinical tests. You know, doing that at a, at a government lab was very focused on more emergency preparedness type scenarios. You know, in other words, if, if uh, say a, a mass population of people is potentially exposed to something nasty, how, how can we give tools to our first responders, the, the police officers and firefighters to help help screen all those people and get treatment to those who, who need it most? And in the course of developing that, my, my co-founders and I, and I started this company with two others, Olark and Sarah, we, we recognize that you know, clinical testing today is still pretty antiquated for the vast majority of tests. You still need to go to a doctor's office or a laboratory, have your blood drawn, wait a few days. And we recognize that there's a, a big opportunity if you can really empower people to, to do some of this on their own, to think about and manage their health in a whole new way. And we started the company about five and a half years ago, have our first product on the market, and really exciting now to be, to be changing the industry a little bit and seeing how people can can manage their health with a whole new approach. And you had a move recently. So tell us about that. Yeah, I did. So the company is headquartered in Livermore, California. So Bay Area, there in the East Bay. I, uh, my family and I moved to Minneapolis, Minnesota about six months ago now. And really excited to be here. Minneapolis, as you know, is is really a, a major hub for medical devices. Not only that, there's a really inspiring and growing entrepreneurship and startup community here. You know, the the cornerstones are still the the Medtronics and Boston Scientifics, but all the innovation and cool things happening, especially in the digital health side and consumer health side, has really been a great fit as we now expand Sandstone right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In June, I had an event there at University Enterprise Labs. So if you guys are listening to this in Minneapolis or St. Paul area, actually UEL is in St. Paul, but every summer they have this awesome big barbecue. So look (laughs) forward to that after winter time. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. I hadn't heard about that one. That's good. Yeah. So Greg, I remember when I first met you, I can't even remember how I, I found you, but I remember we went to your, maybe it wasn't your house, but we went to a house (laughs) in the Bay area. I remember typing the address on the GPS to go meet with this hip new consumer diagnostic startup company. And we were driving there thinking, is this the right address? It's in a neighborhood. (laughs) And it was. So tell us more about what Sandstone Diagnostics is up to and how far you've come from, when was that, December of of 2013, when we had a a business meeting at the kitchen table (laughs) with a baby too. (laughs) Yeah, who knows how many babies were in the room (laughs) at that point. Yeah, so when we started the company, 
you know, super scrappy, hadn't raised money yet, started it basically on our own dime. And we actually had our first employee from day one. He worked with us at the lab, but he was originally from New York. So he needed a place to live and we decided we needed a place to work. So we combined mm-hmm. the two and we rented a house in Livermore. You know, it was kind of an interesting challenge to rent a house for the purposes of a startup company. And we, you know, our landlords were phenomenal. We actually kind of pitched them. We said, well, here's what we're trying to do. This is kind of unique. And they were actually retired lab employees and kind of bought in and got excited about it. So they gave us the lease. We, we worked out of there for, I think, about a year and a half. And we grew and started to hire some more folks and needed our own more legit office space. But so, yeah, you and, you know, a lot of our neighbors certainly kind of raised their eyebrows. <laughs> in those early days, but it worked great. We had a garage, we had a kitchen, we had everything we needed to get this company off the ground. So Sandstone is, uh, we're in the male fertility space. Our first product is called Track. Learn about it at trackfertility.com, T-R-A-K, fertility. It's a home male fertility testing system. So it's a way for men to measure, track, and improve their sperm counts early on to help couples get pregnant, improve their chances of conception. And we started in male fertility for a few reasons, primarily driven by the market opportunity that, you know, the fertility, the fertility industry is exploding and if infertility is becoming a major problem and a growing problem that you know, millions of couples are facing every day. And it's a devastating problem. It's, you know, month after month of going by without being able to get pregnant is, is very emotional, difficult, and stressful that couples are going through. And men are contributing to half the cases of infertility, but nearly everything in this space is focused on women with, you know, at both the consumer and medical level with, with the, the apps that are out there, the, the home ovulation tracking and, and prediction. And, and then on the treatment side, most things are focused on a female partner. And often the man is completely overlooked uh, or not even considered both for you know, cultural and maybe just lack of education uh, reasons. So, you know, we wanted to build a solution that could really help the couple comprehensively early on. And, and the way Track does that is by helping men understand where they fall with what their sperm count is and what it means, but but more so giving them a way to track and improve. So men's sperm count, men's reproductive health is kind of an interesting, unique aspect of health in that men's sperm count can change a lot. It can vary for a lot of reasons. And Track is very focused around helping men understand what could be causing an issue with their fertility and their sperm count, and then giving him the tools that he needs to take control of it. And, you know, relatively small changes to men's health and lifestyle and behaviors can really make a big impact on his ability to produce sperm. And for couples trying to get pregnant, that can be the difference maker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know some of your team has had personal stories around this, right? Well, yeah, I think most people have personal stories around this that, you know, most people we talk to either have firsthand knowledge of infertility or at least know someone. Everyone's got a brother or sister or, you know, aunt and uncle that has been through this and and seen it firsthand about how tough it is. Not only how tough it is to go through it, but how tough it is to talk about it is, I think, one of the biggest things. You know, it's not, this is still a taboo subject. It's still in the shadows, and especially on the male side. Men aren't aren't out there playing softball and talking to their buddies about their sperm count and fertility issues. They're bottling it up and it can be tough for even a couple to talk about it and open up those communication channels. We set out to really change that conversation head on early on. One of the ways we do that is by reaching people through the web. This is a topic that people you know, they might not be talking about, but they do spend a lot of time on Google searching for for information and trying to find solutions. And we built a website. The website's at don'tcookyourballs.com. I absolutely that... love that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. And we we built it very intentionally to one, be a comprehensive source, very scientific, medical, and and you know, bring in the top thought leaders to to write articles and content on this subject. But Two, to be a little bit lighthearted and to get over that awkwardness communication barrier that, you know, we're going to talk about testicles and semen and sperm and all those things that maybe, you know, send a little shrill up your spine, but get over that awkwardness and learn something that can that can really help you take on this problem. And we're very proud. It's, you know, emerged as the go-to resource on the web for information and education on this topic. And, you know, everyday men are learning something about a very important and underserved aspect of their health. And we're very proud of that. Yeah. I- that's such a great thing that you did. And you're right. If people aren't having these conversations with even their spouse, let alone their buddies playing baseball or or basketball, they're going to be searching for answers somewhere. And Google is is a place that often people go. And so that's great that you capitalized on that 
and have that resource to get the conversation started. And, and uh, are people anonymous on there? Like, do they have a screen name or is it just a place for them to, to consume content? Oh, it's totally anonymous and private. A lot of it is content. And you know, I think we see a lot of people coming to us in incognito mode because you know that's what people do these days. But we it's also a growing community that we do have people, we have chat rooms on there, we have forums of, you know, share your information, ask questions and and I think I think the community aspect of it is maybe one of the most powerful elements that People need a way to reach out and and form a bond. And the fact that there's millions of men out there that are struggling with this and not talking to anybody, you know, opening up that communication, forming some sort of community can go a long way. So we're we're very proud of how much usership we have and and looking to continue to grow that and, and make people aware of it. You know, appreciate you helping us spread the word. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So is that website any way affiliated with Sandstone or is Sandstone a kind of a sponsor or have you just kept them totally separate? Well, you know, we run it, we manage it. It's uh, it's all part of what we've built. Again, you know, anything in healthcare, the, the devices, the solutions are only part of, of the answer. And so, mm-hmm. you know, we see the, the education and awareness as an equally important part to the, the track system that is growing too. You know, we just launched this product in January. We launched it at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas and it's taken off. Just last month, we were the number one best-selling fertility device on Amazon. I'm very proud of that, that our male fertility tracker is out there, you know, besting other products in this category. Just last few weeks ago, Newsweek had a cover story entitled, What's Killing America's Sperm? And a lot of research and data has come out recently showing that men's sperm counts are falling off a cliff. And this has been talked about for a long time, but finally there's some definitive data and and studies out there showing that it's a major problem and it's getting worse that you know men's sperm counts today are about half of what they were in the early 70s and that's a huge problem that's not just a fertility problem that's an economic and global epide- epidemic problem that's finally getting some mainstream attention and you know we were happy to be featured in there as one way that people can combat this issue and reverse the trend and just looking to to help bring male fertility and men's reproductive health out of the shadows and, and make people aware of it Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I love that you built a resource to go along with your product. It's not even the intention of, Hey, this is going to help me sell my product. It's just like, Hey, we, we have this responsibility to help start these conversations and be a source for information and and building community. And and that's kind of how I feel with Amua services. There's one thing with building a startup company, there's certain mechanical processes that you go through, like you're in this stage, then you move to the next stage. But then there's all the emotional and mindset and just things in life that happen with being a startup. And it's great to see those conversations happening and people coming together and and just bonding through whatever they're facing, whether it be (laughs) building a startup or, or trying to get pregnant too. Yeah. Well, thanks. I think so. And it didn't really start out that way for us. You know, this was kind of a lesson learned as we start building our product and and talking to customers about what the needs are and you always want to you know start with those customer requirements and inputs and and we were pretty overwhelmed with the stories that we were hearing from people who have gone through this of again how heartbreaking it is and difficult and as soon as somebody hears that you're building a home sperm tracker they are an open book because they've been bottled up for a long time and you meet somebody and within two minutes they're telling you all about the test that they went through and what they experienced in and, and that was very encouraging that you know we're tapping into something here that that needs to be talked about much more and and I think that realization really helped us focus on the education and communication piece just as much as the product itself. And in addition to that, it really transformed the product. You know, when when we started building this, it was much more of of a test kit or kind of a a home screening tool. And, you know, at one point we asked ourselves, well, what if this could be a little bit more? What if this isn't just a way to test at home, but a way to really take control of this problem that men are facing? And that got really exciting for us, re- recognizing how much control men can have over over their sperm quality. So that evolved into, you know, the mobile app that we have out there. It's a free download on the Play Store that can help people track their results, but more importantly, learn on a personalized kind of deep assessment level areas of their life that could be causing those fertility issues and, and giving them some tips and guidance on, on what to do about it. And, you know, a few months of healthier living can, can make all the difference. Yeah. 
Wow, that's great. And so you, you've you already launched, you're on Amazon. Uh, are you seeking any additional investment right now to, to grow even more? Uh, yeah, we'll be fundraising more as we scale up the commercialization. You know, we're really in a, a test and learn type phase with our company of we're trying to build a whole new product category. Okay. And there's there's a lot of there's a lot of learning and testing and things that go on as you do that. So, you know, as we as we continue to establish our channels and our messaging, we'll be we'll certainly be fundraising more to help to help scale it up. But for the time being, you know, we're doing very direct to consumer type channels and we've been successful in being able to reach people through things like Facebook and Google ads and, and your community uh, that you're directly engaging yeah. with. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, and all the thousands of people who come to right to our, our website just through you know, building up that Google rank over the years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I kind of got into this earlier where we talked about how you rented the house for people to live in and do business. And <laughs> besides that, how were you able to sustain your living when you were pre-revenue? Any any other tips for people that are just starting out? Well, sh- well sure. How long you got? I got <laughs> lots of <laughs> Uh, so we were certainly naive when we started the company about how long it would take, how much money you need, you know, to get a product like this to market, as I think most people are. So always, you know, if you have your projections, multiply by two, three or four, and then you're going to have some sort of realistic timeline in, in mind. I, you know, I think my co-founders and I went about a year and a half without any salary or benefits. And, you know, that was certainly longer than we expected or hoped for. But part of getting a startup off the ground and you know, kind of a gut check. But I think you have to really, you know, we, we never had any doubts about doing this. We had a lot of confidence in ourselves. We believed in the, the skills we had to build a product and, and that the market was ready for a solution like this be creative and gritty enough to, to get it done. So, but then also I think, you know, when you, when you start a new startup, you have to partly value the experience going through that of starting a company from off the ground is just a, a character building education <laughs> experience yeah, that definitely. you're not going to get, you know, you have to just go through to get and win or lose, you're going to come out of it stronger personally and professionally on the back end. So that was kind of our mindset from day one of trying to keep our eye on the prize. So yeah, I think, you know, you have to be ready to take some risks. You have to be able and based on your personal and family situation, think of, think through how long can you do this? How are you going to pay the bills and all that? Yeah. I, I don't know if I have any other tips other than, you know, it's tough. I, it's even tougher today, I think, than it was when we started out five years ago. With There's never been more startups out there and there's never been more competition for capital. So, yeah. you know, the days of getting a project, a, a product and a company funded with just a, a few PowerPoint slides are over. You, you darn near have to have your product on the market to get that seed funding in. So my advice to people who are starting out is focus is critical. I'm sure you've all heard that before, but I don't, you might not really know what that means until you're in the throes of it. And if you're going to focus on anything, thing is just build your product, figure out how to get it done and get that thing out there in the customer's hands and good things will come. And if you can put your blinders on and ignore the other things that are getting in the way of that, I think you're going to be more likely to be successful. Mm -hmm. That's great advice. So what's the biggest rough wave or obstacle you've overcome so far in your startup? So we've had a few. The biggest one for us was maybe it was probably our FDA clinical trials were a little more demanding maybe than we initially thought when we hmm. when we when we started out. You know, we had to do a about a 240 patient three site blinded clinical trial. This product is a, a class two medical device for over the counter home use, but we had to prove to the FDA that a it's accurate and b that people can use it and understand it who haven't been trained and they can use it in their own home. And that was a little bit more demanding than than we initially thought, both time-wise yeah. and cost-wise. I think, you know, it's really expensive to to properly do a medical trial. When you're dealing with FDA things, you there just aren't any shortcuts. And if you try to take a shortcut, you're you're likely to regret it down the road. So, you know, make sure that you have the resources and the, the right people in place who have done it before to get through it. You know, in, in the end, ours actually went pretty smoothly, but we had some obstacles in there where, you know, FDA has, has criteria for a reason. And you have to you have to make sure that you're going to hit it. If you're starting a clinical trial and you don't know that you're going to hit it, then you're probably not going to hit it. So it's worth investing up front and everything you can do to make sure that once you pull the trigger and start that extremely expensive clinical trial that you're going to pass because you certainly don't want to do it again. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. And just hiring the right regulatory strategists, you know, you are in point of care. So getting someone that is familiar with those at home, you, oh, at it's home critical. products. It's yeah. absolutely critical. Yeah. I think I've talked to a lot of people who ask like, you know, well, can we do this ourselves? Can we figure it out? And, yeah. you know, the answer is kind of like, no. maybe, but <laughs> Why would you ever want to do that? Yeah. It's, well, you, know, you might you might pay a consultant a couple hundred bucks an hour or more, but it's you can't put a price on the expertise and the time and savings that you're going to have because you have to get that clearance or that approval. And if you don't, you don't have a business. So you have to spend money where you need it. And that is one area where you don't want to cut any corners. Exactly. And a lot of people don't realize that you can you can engage or you can have your regulatory strategist, you know, engage with the FDA and start that conversation earlier. So. Oh, that reminds me since since today's Halloween, I remember our first call with, you know, we did this kind of pre-sub submission with the FDA, which is just kind of an informal. Exactly. Yeah. You have a call a with great... them. We had a half hour telecon and I remember it was actually on Halloween. So we're all sitting around our conference room, sweating bullets because this is our first time talking to the FDA wearing these ridiculous costumes. Like <laughs> someone had like a chicken hat on and here we're trying to have, <laughs> have this kind of very <laughs> serious conversation, serious conversation <laughs> with our FDA reviewers. Well, maybe they were dressed in costume too. You just didn't know because it was conference call. (laughs) I like to think so. It would have been funnier if it was video call. (laughs) The FDA gets a bad rap. I think a lot of times we actually found them to be extremely helpful. And, you know, they're set out to to work with you and get Mm -hmm. this product in the market because you're you're bringing a product to market that's going to help people. And I think one of the lessons learned from us was they're, they're actually a pretty valuable resource and you, you definitely want to work with your experts, your consultants, whoever it is that's done this before. But, you know, the more you can engage with them and, and be a partner with them, I think is they're very open to it. So we were pleased with really pleased with our FDA interaction throughout the entire process. Great. So how through through all of these rough waves and you know through being a scrappy startup, how have you kept yourself motivated to, to keep going when when it's really tough? Well, I think it comes down to keeping your eye on that end goal that, and there were kind of two for us. I mean, first is making this a successful company. And this is for me, my first startup and, and something I'm very proud of, but we're not, we're not there yet. There's still a lot of work left to do to make this a successful company. So, you know, I think keeping that piece in mind is helpful, but then maybe more motivating is just the nature of our product and, and what it does for people is, is really a driver. It helps you get up and, and hit the pavement every day. And it really started from very early on. Again, coming back to talking to the couple, you know, my wife and I were fortunate that we didn't have fertility issues. We have, we have two little girls, they're one and three years old and, and it's the best part of our lives. And I can't imagine, you know, having, not having them around or, or going through this, that what people experience. And, and now that our product's on the market, we hear the opposite. We hear all these success stories about people using it, identifying issues or, you know, seeing improvements, helping people get pregnant. We have, you know, people who have purchased our product and then got pregnant from using it. And that's incredibly rewarding. And, you know, when you hear about people able to start their family, this life-changing experience and, and happy time in their life that you're some small part of, that's, that's really motivating. So I think those two things are really what have kept us going. That's great. It is. I can really see how you guys are motivated every single day because you're seeing those tangible results. You're hearing from your community and it's it's right there. So that's amazing. Yeah, thanks. So we've gotten a lot of value from Greg already, but we're going to take a quick break from to hear from our sponsors and we'll be back with his best advice. What do Oprah, Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, and hopefully you have in common? They all read or listen to over 30 books per year. I've got a way you can get there too. I listen to audible.com audiobooks, walking my dog Abby in the car, getting ready in the morning. And I've got a free 30-day trial for Audible that you can claim over at amua-services.com forward slash free book. Right now, I highly encourage you to check out The Lean Startup by Eric Reese. Are you tired of going to pitch competitions and not getting the investors' attention? Build your pitch the right way with a solid foundation. Invention Idea to Profitable Product walks you through building a startup around your idea to make you attractive to investors and gives you the perfect pitch in just 100 days. Try it out free at amua-services.com forward slash IIPP. 
Okay, so Greg, what's the best advice you can give a new med tech entrepreneur or startup? Well, I already mentioned one piece, which was you need to find your focus. And I think that's an easy cliche, but when you really get into it, it's it can be difficult to identify what is the one thing that you need to do and make sure you do it well. So for us, it was it was building the product and just keeping that product development going as quickly and as on track as we could. For other companies, it might be different. And the more you can weed out the distractions and get that one thing done is, is going to be critical to being successful. So finding your focus is one. The second is, I think, doing your homework on what works and what doesn't in the startup world. You know, for me, I, I bought a lot of lunches before we started this company and coffee meetings with people who had, you know, started a company on the labs or had their own small business going just to hear stories. I think the more stories you can hear about what people did, what worked, what what didn't, what what are their failures were, what they do differently is just invaluable because everyone's got a different path. But the more you can learn from others and try to not replicate things that went wrong, the better off you're going to be. This is all about statistics. So Mm-hmm. You know, your, your odds of success in a startup are pretty low. And the more you can do to, to tilt the odds into your favor, it's kind of like fertility in that world. You know, one of mm-hmm. our taglines is tilt the odds of conception in your favor. Well, if you're trying to do a startup, do everything you can just to tilt those odds of success into your favor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So keep listening to the podcast. Keep listening to these stories. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, less time consuming and less expensive than going to a lot of lunches and coffee dates. <laughs> so what's the best book you can recommend and why? The best book? Somebody recently asked me that. So do you know who Scott Adams is, Megan? No. Tell me. So he's an author, but you probably know him better as the creator of Dilbert, the cartoon. Oh, uh-huh. So he's a Dilbert guy. He's a Northern California guy. But he wrote a book called How to, How to Fail at Everything and Still Win Big or something like that. Anyway, it came out a few years ago and it, it's really a phenomenal read, especially from a startup standpoint. It's all about, it's kind of about his story, but it's more about focusing on on your systems rather than goals. You know, kind of, your goals are meaningless. It's about the systems and the way you go about things that's going to, again, help you have a better likelihood or chances of, of success. He does a lot of blogging and, and periscoping today about persuasion and especially how it pertains to President Trump, which is fascinating. But he's a really bright guy. And I, I'd recommend that book. It's an entertaining read. And, and you'll definitely learn a few things about you know maybe just how to go about things or set things up from the get-go that you hadn't thought about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I've, I've been reading a book by John Maxwell and really putting into practice. And I, I think what you're saying there really overlaps with this, where successful habits breed success and putting together those systems, putting together those routines and consistently following them and doing things like that is going to set you up for success later. You may not see it now and you may think, oh, I'm doing my morning routine where I read 10 minutes and then I take 10 minutes on my personal development and I do this and I do that. But later on, it's just the compound effect. At least that's what I keep telling myself every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a piece of it. You know, there's some interesting nuggets of things like, you know, the importance of focusing on yourself of, and it's kind of a counterintuitive thought, but, you know, if you take care of yourself, you're, you're healthy, you eat well, you keep your energy up, that's going to be better for everyone else. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people tend to sacrifice themselves a little bit for the betterment of their family or spouse or whoever. But, you know, you have to take care of yourself first. And and by doing that, in a way, you're, you're helping those around you. So I, I like that thought. And you, you can go too far with that. But, you know, it's okay to to make sure you're taking time for yourself and, and take care taking care of that first. Yeah, it's always like they say on the airplane, you know, put on your own oxygen mask first <laughs> yeah, exactly. before you help others. <laughs> right. Yeah. Otherwise the others are gonna suffer. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So you guys are doing something for Movember too, which is coming up. So let us know more information on that. Yeah. So you know, today's Halloween, tomorrow's November first, and uh, the month of November is a big time for men's health. So prostate cancer, testicular cancer and other areas of men's health that maybe don't get quite the attention they deserve given how prevalent they are. But this is a time of the year to build awareness and, and we're, we're doing some campaigns ourselves. So sperm health is continuing emerge as not just an important fertility parameter, but a, 
really an important health parameter for for men overall that low sperm counts have been linked to higher rates of testicular cancer and prostate cancer and diabetes and and cardiovascular disease later in life that we want to help spread the word that early prevention and detection is critical. So, so we'll be doing some events, some campaigns this month, and I would just encourage people to check it out. And when you see people growing, you know, big hairy mustaches <laughs> and, and talking about it, that, you know, it's not just the fun of growing a mustache. It's more about helping people become a little bit more aware about how prevalent these these devastating conditions are. And, you know, we're dealing also with men, especially young men, don't, don't go to the doctor at all. And it's a big problem that these guys who, you know, I can say as a former young man, that you know, young men don't live well, period. And the things that we do early in our life can wreak havoc and building a little bit more awareness about avoiding those things that can cause health diseases later in life are, is very important. So we're mm-hmm. We're trying to help, you know, reach out to our audience, which is guys in their 20s, 30s and 40s that are otherwise healthy, that, you know, sperm is important too. And the earlier you can recognize these things, the the healthier your prognosis. So where can they be involved with with your team? Well, check out our website. So we'll be starting some stuff tomorrow, November okay. 1 and, and check out our social media. Follow us on Follow us on Twitter. Track at Track HQ is is a big one where we'll be promoting things, and we do a lot of work with the urology community. So this is a time for us to engage with a lot of the experts that you know already do it a great job of, of spreading the word. But there's a lot more to be done. So we'll be continuing to partner with them all month long. Sounds good. Thanks. So Greg, what's the best way to get in touch with you? And you can leave us with your favorite quote. Best way to get in touch? Well, I'd encourage people to check out the website. We talked about Don't Cook Your Balls. Com and the, the products at trackfertility.com, T-R-A-K fertility.com. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Twitter at Greg Summer and you know, look up Greg Summer with an O, S-O-M-M-E-R. Happy to connect and I'm happy to, to help people. I think, you know, if, if people want to reach out and, and ask questions, I always love to see those and anything that we can help from our experience. So happy to pass along. Favorite quote. So I'll give you a good Minnesota one. And actually someone <laughs> asked me about my favorite quote recently. And this was a quote that I I just recently saw, Megan, do you know who Herb Brooks is? No. So Herb Brooks, this is a little Minnesota reference for you. He was the coach of the 1980s U.S. hockey team. Oh, the the Miracle team? Yeah, you you probably see Miracle. Uh Yeah, so the coach is named Herb Brooks. He's a Minnesota guy. He so he coached the University of Minnesota, and I, my wife and I were having dinner over by the Excel Energy Center, which is where the Minnesota Wild play, and they have a little restaurant on the corner downtown St. Paul called Herbie's, and there's a big a big neat statue of uh, Herb Brooks out front, and and there's a quote there at the restaurant that says, "Risk something or forever sit with your dreams," and it's really short and sweet, but I thought, wow, oh, that's that's a good one for you know a startup that you. If you're going to have a dream, be prepared to, to put a little risk out there. And risk isn't a bad thing. So so I'll say risk something or forever sit with your dreams from the great Herb Brooks out of Minnesota. It's my quote for you. That's a great quote and a great, I think a great way to end the episode too, to just inspire you. You know, you, n- you never know what can happen if you don't start doing it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, like you, got a ton of value listening to Greg and I've got more guests and resources over for you to check out at amua-services.com. So see you over there. And until the next episode, Amua. 